One. It's Alicia and Rode! We're here! Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? Why is all the... Okay, this is really confusing. Oh, I think I switched around. Okay. Nothing is as it seems. Yeah, the, the, no, all the, the, all the videos aren't in the right place, but that's because I moved them around last time, I think. Um, oh. When we were in a six-person configuration. So I'm just going to drag everybody over. Awesome. This is a great way to start, guys. Now you can see my so face. So excited about this. It's going to be the best. I shoot it. And David, your Zoom name is boom. still Caspi. I know. <laughs> we're good. It was Caspi when I was the GM last time, too. <laughs> well, yeah. The but... name. Okay. All right. So this is this is Elysian Road. We're here. Uh, it's fine. Technical difficulties are... It's a thing of the past. And now we're just going to play super awesome sci-fi. Holy crap. That sounds really funny. Fun. Oh, and that's a pretty good hit. Nice job. Yeah. I was waste that. your crit. Uh, who do you who are you shooting? <laughs> I, I just I said I shoot it. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> this is what David does. Uh, all right, you shoot you the wall of your room and okay. Till is mad at you. Um <laughs> Yes. Very mad. Okay, so uh Fix it. <laughs> we are gonna be playing a sci fi campaign. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Finally, 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 finally. It's been forever since we've done like an actual can okay have we actually ever done like a legitimate long-running I mean, sci-fi campaign we're not counting our attempt to do uncharted worlds then no i don't think so connor and i's escapade into the uh my, my luck god and his uh that was unfortunate space fantasy fight. yeah 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 okay how about the star wars sweet. rpg that we did where we blew up the universe that also happened there have been a couple star wars <laughs> rpgs but yeah i think this is like the first like legit campaign that we're streaming at the very least um yeah and so we're gonna be playing this awesome game called start that number and uh nice sound effects where'd you get those uh, <laughs> my mouth it's an exclusive deal when i bought it when i was born um <laughs> anyway i'm really really hype for this game it's gonna be awesome and um uh, i think the first thing we start out with um is you know if this is a tv show um we start who just flipped over the spaceship <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Way to go. laughs> i haven't touched it i'm no, still I'm loading in i am still loading in so um we're gonna start like if this is a tv show we're gonna start with like a scene that none of you are technically in um, it's gonna kind of like the prologue to to everything that's gonna happen in this campaign um, so I think the first thing we, sh we see is we see, um, uh, uh, we see an arena and, uh, we uh -oh. see, this is from a distance, um, but we're seeing a bunch of people, um, I think, okay, so I think we were seeing, like, a legit, like, Rocket League type game happening, um, in this, like, arena, um, and, uh, these people are controlling, like, these, you know, remote control cars, like, from consoles on the side of the arena, but, like, the whole thing is, like, you know, out there for, for everybody to see, and, and, uh, uh, we just see, like, basically one, one, like, remote control car crash into another one, make it explode, um, and then as the, like, explosion happens, um, a little text comes on the bottom of the screen, and it says, uh, screen, and it says, um, uh, Sector 0503, manned. Planet, SWA. Um, 3199, December. And uh, we see, you know, the, the fans go wild as this, like, car explodes, right? And then we see, like, just the game continue. It's, it's literally like a giant, like, rock ball, uh, Rocket League um, game in, you know, they're hitting on this ball in this big arena. Um, and it's, you know, it's in the future, so this is feasible somehow. Um, and, uh, we see, you know, the, the fans, like, going crazy, and we start to pan out, um, of this, like, uh, arena, um, and, um, the camera kind of, like, goes into, like, it's backing up, and it goes through some glass and into, like, a box seat, um, up at the top of this, like, arena. Um, and we see two people, um, we see, um, a, uh, a Haitian man, um, bald, um, kind of like a large nose, um, some stubble, um, and he is wearing, um, 
like a suit. Um, it, it's definitely different from what we would consider like a fine formal wear. It's a little, you know, off because it's, you know, a thousand years into the future. And so we have like, um, uh, there's some stylistics that are, are definitely different. Um, but it's kind of, it's recognizable at least as like a suit. Um, and he's sitting there, um, on this, t uh, on this chair. It's like a lounge chair. Um, watching like the, the game, uh, from this, uh, from this box seat. And he has like a glass of scotch in one hand and he kind of like sips it and he looks over at the, the man next to him, um, who is a, um, who's, uh, a, a Arabic. Um, and, uh, he has like kind of like curly hair, curly black hair and like, um, uh, like a long beard. Um, and, uh, he's kind of like wringing his hands nervously. The, the Arabic man is, um, and, uh, the Haitian looks over at him and he says, why are you so nervous? My friend. Why don't you enjoy the game? And then he, he looks over and he says, I I don't know. I just have a have a bad feeling about this. And uh, De Haitian just like shakes his head and, and takes another um, swig of his scotch. Um, and then you, they hear a knock at the door. Um, and, and the Haitian looks over and he says, Yes, what is it? And then you, he, we hear muffled from the other side of the door, Sir, we have a problem. What do you mean? What sort of problem? Um, an Imperium sort of problem. And the Haitian and the Arabic, Arab, Arabian man look at each other. And then they both like stand up like really quickly. The guy just like spills his, his scotch on the floor. The glass just kind of like, like spins and then the camera focuses on it as it spins. And then we cut and they're walking down a hallway. Um, you know, that, you know, that, that, that shot, right. Where like the camera's backing up and they're walking towards the, the camera. Right. And it's like really tense. The music starts to play. Um, and they're, yeah, they're, they're walking and, uh, the Haitian looks at the guy and he says, I thought we had more time. What, what is going on? And, and the Arabian's just like shaking his head. Um, and uh, they, they continue walking down the hall and, and the Haitian um, kind of like makes a gesture to some soldiers that they pass and they like fall and step behind them and they start start to walk um, into a room and you know, the doors like slide open. Um, and uh, it's like this big like control room, right? So we had this whole bunch of computers, it's like uh, scientists and lab coats and like um, a bunch of like comms officers just like running around like in a panic. Like, and, and we see um, on the screen, um, uh, on this like big screen in, in there we see um uh perimeter uh perimeter penetration detected um and uh the haitian he's just um like swearing under his breath and he, he looks over at, like s some soldier um and he says how could you let this happen i thought i thought our perimeters were more uh, were more stable than this um and uh the, the soldier soldier shakes his shakes his head and and he says I, i'm sorry sir um we knew this was inevitable i I guess it just happened a little bit sooner than we thought. Um, and the Haitian looks over the, uh, the Arabian and he says, erase all the data. And the Arabian nods. And then he goes over to the computer, like types a couple things in, clicks enter. And then we hear the electric guitar of caffeine from, uh, from Ruby start to play. Yes. And we get the, the theme. Uh, opening and so it's right it's like um in intense electric guitar um it's it but it's like it's like upbeat um uh intense but not like in a uh in a uh a danger uh what's the word um i'm trying to think of like the way to describe it um, it's not dark yeah yeah thank you it's not dark it's just like intense and like driving um and driving, so right, that's a good one yeah yeah we get we get this you know this um, this opening song, and uh, um, you know the first thing that comes up obviously is Elysian Road and kind of like folds folds out, um, and then we see all the different characters um, in in, in the, this opening sequence. And so let's just go through real quick and and you tell us um, each of it, if you, each of you when your character comes up on the screen, tell us what your character would be doing in the opening sequence of the t of the TV show version of this, and then like uh, you know just your name obviously but like so connor we see e evelyn leidner come up on the screen um what do we see right. from from evelyn in this like opening sequence i mean probably calmly shooting somebody in the face <laughs> <laughs> so what is what does evelyn look like um blonde hair um young maybe a little little a little bit taller um 
I, I don't know. Most of the time, a ponytail. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, so we just see you, like, um, looking c- cool, calm, and dangerous, walking down a hallway, and then just, like, yeah. <laughs> like fire fire at someone. I mean, rap- fire, fire at a couple soldiers, like, in rapid succession. And all the soldiers I in this intro are, like, like, faceless, right? They're all, they all have, like, the same, like, uh, slate gray armor, the face, right. and, you know, yeah, faceless. So it, does, it doesn't seem as bad as if you're, like, actually killing people. It's just, like... <laughs> right, but I, no, I was thinking more of, like, somebody is kneeling in front of me, and I look like, over and turn back. I, like, I look over to a different character, and I kind of mm. turn back, and I just shoot him. And okay. I just kind of shoot him. All right. Yeah, yeah, sure, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, a bit more intense. Andy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we, um, uh, um, the, the next name comes up on the screen, and it says Ode Enger. Um, and, yeah, what do we see from, well, first describe your character, and then what are they doing in the open sequence? Yeah, so Ode is really, uh, um, uh, tall and sort of lanky, and he's wearing, uh, uh, this looks like a really futuristic combat armor and uh, he's in a uh, similarly like excessively super uh, futuristic sci-fi looking city mm-hmm. and in the edges of the scene it bleeds into the weird like uh, uh, blue hexagons look like something's being simulated yeah yeah and uh, he it's just a close-up on like his torso up and then he turns and kind of moves like this and a laser shoots past him and you can see a scope on like a building behind him and he just yeah. like sort of dodges a laser uh-huh fire and then it, it sort of slows back down to freezes and then cuts to the next character mm-hmm. yeah and i think like back at evelyn's too like right before you shoot the person connor we actually probably see you like manipulating some like rts looking like holograms on the screen uh, right yeah because uh, yep. each of you are you know we're pro gamers and so we see you yeah like manipulating these like rts units right like um on this like hologram um yeah so then uh the next next uh, name we see on the screen is uh till adorant um Describe your character, Josh, and uh, what they're doing in the opening sequence. Till is a man, kind of mid-40s, fairly average build. Um, he has a he has short-cropped hair, short-cropped beard. Um, he's wearing kind of a grubby pilot's outfit. Um, kind of on that edge of... It was high-tech at one point, but now it's, it's, it's used. It's worn. Right, yeah. Um, and he's kind of leaning out the poor or he's leaning out of the um or leaning out over a gangplank coming down out of a spacecraft we see the voids grace behind him kind of well used well worn spacecraft yeah cool uh yeah so then we, the next name that comes on the screen is um Fergus and then <laughs> A long string of, of letters. <laughs> a long string of letters that I think, like, it, it, it says them all at first, right? So Mick and Mick, Ike and Hergen Hale, right? And, and then it just, like, collapses in and of itself and just, like, qu- Mick, question, question, question mark, <laughs> right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, what's, what does Fergus look like and um, and what are they doing in the opening sequence? Uh, uh, for black hair, sh- really short. He's wearing a he's wearing a fancy fancy little little suit and he has like one of like those like uh what are they called like the the bolo ties or whatever. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and he's uh he's he's behind the wall, peeking out every once in a while, making sure no one's dead. <laughs> right. So the, we see like all the other characters nice. like fighting something, right? Fighting fighting someone a bunch of soldiers. And yeah, like you're like peeking out like, <laughs> hello. Uh, maybe you, like give a thumbs up to everybody. <laughs> I, I give a thumbs up to Odd. So we- <laughs> yeah. Um, please, please thing, feel free. Please feel free to mispronounce uh, Ode's name all the time. Yeah, you can call me out as much as you like. Yeah, it's, that's kind of the joke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and the last name we get on the screen is um, Dylan Calary. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Calary. Calary. <laughs> Dylan Calary. <laughs> nice. There might be jokes there too. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yeah, so no, for Dylan sure. I... On the screen, and um, what uh, um, what do you look like, and uh, what are you doing? Yeah, so Dylan's like 17, 18, around that age, and she's got um, dyed bright white hair that's always up in a really messy bun that somehow stays up, and she's just trying to remove herself from the high energy of this sequence and sitting on her bunk on the ship and reading a book with her with her sword across her lap. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. Uh-huh. That's awesome. 
Um, yeah, and I think the last the last shot of the sequence that we get, right, is you guys, you know, we go through the whole, like, full, full Metal Alchemist-style, like, battle sequences where they're just, like, completely, absurdly ridiculous. <laughs> everybody's and you guys everybody's are... fighting in the air, just fighting the sky. Yeah, like... exactly, right? You guys are just <laughs> in the air, like, fighting things. It's just so ridiculous. And then um, the last shot we get is um, all of you, like, leaning against uh, the Void's Grace um, in various positions, right? Um, and, Until uh... looking slightly annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. No, this whole sequence is... Still looking slightly annoyed. <laughs> yeah, and then we we see right like you guys all kind of like lean against uh, you lean against the ship, and then it's like as if someone takes a picture, and then it like it it still frames, and then kind of like zooms out, and we see your guys' silhouettes right beneath the 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 title Elysian Road, um, and then we cut to black, fade back up, and it says present day, uh, January first, thirty two hundred. Um, zero 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 two, Silas system. Okay, how many days after the the first thing we got was? I didn't. And it says one year later. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> Three hundred sixty five space days. Oh, yeah, I think I accidentally described it in December of the year before this. I meant like January of the year before. I meant December of yeah. It's it's a year later. <laughs> whatever. Space December. Yeah, space December last year or whatever. <laughs> not or two oh. years ago or whatever. Uh, Are we doing this, year. David? Are we really doing this, David? I mean, haven't we been doing this the whole time? <laughs> I haven't, but okay. Oh. Well, I mean, that's your fault. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and then we see, um, uh, uh, you know, one year later, and then Cosmos Belt. Um, so it's we, we see um, we see the Void's Grace, um, which is this you know long um, uh, kind of uh, you know, the ship is um, is uh, kind of like has a fork at the you know at the, the the head of the ship um and it's uh you know it's long um tan and orange um uh you know grungy looking ship and it's kind of just like floating um uh through uh through space in the in the middle of this asteroid belt um and uh we uh we kind of like pan around the ship and then go through the wall of the of the ship and then come out the other side into the bowels of the ship and as soon as we do um we hear some music playing on the loudspeakers what music is it guys whose music is playing uh probably tills right yeah, yeah. Tills? <laughs> okay I was, I was gonna say yeah right. it could have been it could have been odes and that would have been a point of contention but nah it's a stirring it's a stirring operatic <laughs> duet mm -hmm. um from one of the is it the flower one duet? of the great no, no. It's a male-female duet from the one of the great Svalin operas. It's a father singing to his daughter about how she ought never marry. Nice. And instead seek adventure. And she sings so she sings of the longings of her heart to marry mm -hmm. and to settle down. Interesting. And it's a baritone soprano duet. Yeah, and so um, we hear this music, and we start to kind of like go through the ship, and we kind of we pass by a couple of uh, a couple of the crew members as they're like going about. Um, so we see Evelyn just like walking down the hallway. Um, what do you look like when you're just walking down the hallway of the ship? Like, what what's your like stance like? Straight back. Um, I mean, probably very um, by the book. Probably very deliberate yeah. steps. Um, like my my right hand and my left foot will move at the same time. Right left hand and, and right foot will move at the same time. Yeah, and it's just a very deliberate kind of walk. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, we pass by you as you're like walking um the opposite direction the camera is moving, and um and then we we see like we we uh, pass by real quick and the camera like pans over and we see um we see Ode um in the uh in in the the bedroom where the the males in the ship hang out. Um, and uh, what's Ode doing in the room right now as we just like pass by? You muted, David. He's just sitting cross-legged on his bed with his compad, which is blurring at max volume some like heavy metal music while he's playing like Space Angry Birds or something. I don't know. And uh, yeah, so. <laughs> right. So we see. Yeah, they we get this that. like we get this like fade in and out, right? Star Wars As Wars. we pass by your room, we hear the heavy metal start to play, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's, and it's yeah. very directly in contrast to the opera. And then we like pass by, right? As as you're as you move by, and then the opera like comes back up in the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh yeah and then we see we see uh we we end up in the in the kitchen um and uh we see fergus in the kitchen uh, what's fergus doing in the kitchen Pardon? We we pass by the kitchen in this like montage uh, going through the to the ship with the, with the camera, and uh, we see Fergus in the kitchen. What's what's Fergus doing there? He's attempting to bake truffles. <laughs> okay, so we see you like pulling out something from the oven, and it's like a smoking and and like doesn't look like edible at all. Um, and what you're just like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I set it down next to the other three batches that didn't turn out so well, and uh, I start over. <laughs> yeah, oh, start mixing, mixing something in the bowl again. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then we 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 end up in the in the cockpit, and we go forward right to the, to the head of the ship, and we see um, we see Till um, in the in the, in the seat uh, the cockpit cockpit, and then we see Dylan next to him. Um, what are you guys talking about? I'm I think... probably trying to try argue with him about about his music taste. <laughs> Till is Till's put out. I don't think you fully grasp the beauty of this piece. This these two singers are renowned the sector over for being experts in their individual roles. The soprano here sang on multiple planets before making her home on Svalge. You don't make it on Svalge if you don't have the best voice in the galaxy, or in this sector anyway. And this baritone? I've met him personally, or I think I did. No, that was someone else. This baritone! <laughs> Yeah, is that is that Dylan's attitude toward this whole thing too? Yeah. <laughs> you you just like involuntarily yawn. Or voluntarily yawns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, you should you should look at you should look up the opera. You should read the libretto. It's amazing. It's a fantastic story, as far as operas go. A little on the edge. A little 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 far-fetched for opera but the music is excellent it was the last opera ever composed by oh which one was it oh, i should know this so dylan are you just not saying anything you're just like listening to him ramble about it yeah i'm just kind of staring out the window literally into space yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally staring off into space till reaches over grabs a uh kind of it, it's a Worn, used. This thing is probably twenty years old. This data slab that he grabs off the console, mm -hmm. and it's, it doesn't fit him quite right. It's in addition to being all battered and beaten up. You can tell at one point it was pink, and it kind of has a <laughs> like flowery background on the desktop as he quickly swipes through to the next app. Mm -hmm. So you don't really get to see too much of it, but it's this thing doesn't seem like it fits him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least from a, like a simple is... physical description, for sure. Yeah, from from a simple physical description, it doesn't seem like he fits him. Mm -hmm. and he swipes through, and he pulls up the libretto, and he hands it to Dylan. He's like, "Look, just just read the description, read the story. You'll appreciate the music if you actually know what they're singing about." Dylan takes it and looks over it and um, just kind of says, if I have to know the story about something, I don't need to listen to it. Till snatches the data, data slab back, gent gently puts it back on the dock and just sort of <laughs> turns away in his seat to check the nav console. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, we're finished with this conversation. Every time somebody says Dylan or Dylan, I get that someone's talking about me thing because of Dylan, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh, yeah, and I think um, like as you do that, um, uh, Josh, um, you get a you get a notification on like the 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 console 
um, it kind of like starts blinking red. And what is what specifically is the notification about? Because so, yeah, it's basically like an incoming anything signal. the future has gotten right. If there's anything the future has gotten right, it's user interface design yeah, and getting information fair. first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it basically just says, like, incoming transmission. And it's, like, it's basically saying, like, asking if you want to, like, open the transmission to hear it. Can I can I say that I, I saw this in the future, and that's why I was walking towards the cockpit? Sure, yeah. Okay. So, what do you think it is? Yeah, so she just, like, walks in. She's just suddenly there. <laughs> no, I probably I probably wouldn't choke. No. It's... Put it up. That's all I say. Or can I can I say I, I say that right before it blinks? Right. <laughs> Put it up. It's like right before it actually comes on. Um and you wouldn't you wouldn't catch it unless you like went back and like re, you know rewound and then watched the part in the DVD again, right? Like mm -hmm. Till Till hesitates. Actually Evelyn's statement confuses till just enough that he reaches over to try to put the libretto up off of the data pad and onto the <laughs> main display before the transmission light caught his eye and so he's sort of stuck halfway between and he looks at evelyn kind of quizzical look like did you mean the libretto or did you mean the incoming <laughs> call just turns the volume up <laughs> till please hit the button he taps the button and the libretto shows up on the screen. He scrolls down to where they are in the song. The other button. Then then turns over to pull up the communication on the small nav console. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, I, I walk so... up as if to the helm, to, as if I'm taking charge. Hello? So it's not... Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to respond to you immediately. It's basically um, a repeated signal, and you've just come in range of it. Um, and it's basically, it's, it's very similar to that, like, um, those sort of, like, number stations that will just, like, repeat, like, like things over and over and over again. Um, and so, it, it sounds really creepy, but it's basically, like, um, you know, uh, transmission iteration, one, one, two, three. And then it says, hello? Hello, is there someone out there? Uh, we, something went wrong. We're stuck. I'm I'm sending my coordinates um in the or she just like says the coordinates right um and she's right. like w w our, our ship went offline uh, I, I, we're not sure what happened but something someone is is in space with us they're they're nearby they they haven't come on board yet but it's only a matter of time I I think they're pirates or something uh, I'm not sure uh, I'm sending this as a as a beacon of distress for any um any uh. Any ships in, in the area who, you know, she says, like, some sort of, like, I don't know, legalese language of, like, um, who have the, uh, um, the, uh, jurisdiction, like, she's saying, like, you know, if there's any, like, um, security in the area or, uh, people from Midas who, like, are, are part of either of these corps, and then she, she says, um, she says, uh, we are from, um, uh, I need, to, I need to come up with the name for this corporation. I don't know why I didn't do it already. Um, as as she gets to the word pirate, um, right. Till perks up and growls slightly, flicks the transmission onto the main viewer above the still open libretto document, and then kicks the kind of the chair kind of slides on a pair of rails from the actual helm to a larger console he kicks the chair yeah. back nearly knocking evelyn over punching in the coordinates as described right and then uh yeah she says um we are a ship um uh you know designated from uh, castro pharmaceutical service and uh we are on en route to um, new Cashern to provide medical support um to uh you know to the uh the population um please it is imperative that these um pharmaceutical uh, that this medicine arrives on time and undisturbed. Um, you know, l lives of innocence depend on it. And then it, she says, um, uh, I, yeah, it just ends there. Yeah, and then it just repeats, right? So it says, you know, iteration one, one, two, four. Iteration one, iteration one, one, two, four. Uh, about 40, 41 hours. 
I legitimately just did the math on that. About 41 hours? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, there's still a chance they'll be alive. I say we engage. Where is the... Where is the coordinate relative to us? What kind of distance are we talking? It and is... Just, in, just rough, rough, rough time distance. Right, yeah. So, it, I'll just do time, because that's easier. Um, it will take you uh -huh. about... Like, just going at normal speed, it will take you about um, uh, two hours to r arrive at their, like, point in the asteroid belt. It seems like something was, like, blocking your... Um, your transmission before you should have picked it up longer before this or much before okay this. okay do we have some kind of long-range sensor can we sniff out anything in that direction or is that not a tech that's available to us uh what do you mean by sniff out like in terms of can we tell that there's like a ship that direction or yeah. at this point is the transmission the only thing we can pick up at this distance that sounds like a a roll of some sort um, it does, yeah. or it sounds like a mechanics question on the rulebook. As yeah, I mean, long range sensors isn't, can be hit or miss. Answer. Like the, the yeah, the, the the game leaves a lot of that detail up to us. Um, so okay, cool. Yeah. So um, there's probably long range scanning equipment that we probably don't have. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, yeah. seeing some of the pricing in this game, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I assume, true. I assume that. It, it's a program role if you're going to make a role. That's what I yeah. computer thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh man, I just realized that I haven't, I need to switch around all the faces in the, uh, the World 20 screen. Awesome. Give me a hey. I uh, walk over to the comm and hit the button. All hands on deck, please. Isn't everybody already up there except me? Uh, Fergus is no, we've oh, got okay. a we've got our intrepid chef. Okay, then, also busy in yeah. the kitchen. He's coming to the bridge, out. and I'm bearing truffles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, we're gonna have to, okay. So that's actually the first roll that has to happen. Let's see if you actually <laughs> made good truffles. Uh, that's really the important thing. Here. What is that? This is the critical roll. So yeah, this is um, you're gonna roll work. Because that's work is basically the catch all for anything else that isn't like. Um, uh, okay, I have to ask. In this I have to ask, what is that noise? I'm not exactly sure. What, hey, what noise? Hey, hey, I think in your background, David. David. What does it sound like? It it's a like solid white noise static. Yeah. Mute yourself uh, real quick, I'm just curious. Okay. Yeah, it was definitely you. <laughs> That's really weird. Like it's yeah, it's really obnoxious. I'm not sure what. Do you have a fan it's in weird. the there's... background? What's that? Do you have a fan in the background? No, there's no white noise on. I mean, I I have a. I mean, I have something on the computer in the background, but it's coming through headphones. There shouldn't be any. Yeah, there's so no it might be a wire thing. Is the thing? Is yeah. your? You have a wireless headset? No. It's wired. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just. It's definitely picking up something. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing. There's nothing to pick up. There's no noise in my room. Um, I will... Give me a second. Okay. Check to see if it's plugged in right, I guess. Yeah, that'll be yeah, my suggestion. Otherwise, click the wire around. Be, yeah, it must be something in the like wiring itself. That's, that's... No, it's all plugged in. Is it running through the correct microphone? Yeah, I checked that earlier. Hmm. hmm. All right. All right. We can just deal with it. I don't know. How's that roll for, or how's that roll? Yeah. Caleb? So what did you what did you add to that, Jared, for a stat? Uh, I just assumed it would be intelligence. Yep. I, I was figure. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So you definitely didn't make very good truffles. Um, so you you brought pity truffles, I guess. Like pity, it's not actual good food at all. Yeah. So he, they're, they're, he, they're burnt on the outside and somehow somehow still raw on the inside. <laughs> right. Yeah. Turn the heat down. I even I know that much. Uh, yeah. So he just like puts this like platter of truffles on the like um, counter of the console and like all in the way of everybody's stuff really. Um, is everyone just gonna ignore him or? Um, I think Till's busy trying to get a scan off, just ignoring the kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I don't like truffles. I don't like <laughs> so is that what you say, Evelyn? You're just like, I, sorry, I don't like truffles. 
No, I mean, I don't, no, I don't say anything. You don't say anything. I mean, my, my eyes are, are fixed on, like, base right now. I'm trying to look for different signs of anything and I'm trying to figure out what exactly is going on. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so, uh, Till, if you want to go ahead and make that, uh, program, make that program roll. That sounds like a good idea. So, you're just trying to like see um, what exactly what's your exact intent? I want to see if I can locate the source of the transmission. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean that shouldn't be too difficult. So, go ahead and give it a shot. Yeah, no problem. Um, that was almost the my mic still feedbacking. Best. Nope. Sounds great. Nope. Um. Yeah, that's almost the best possible that you could do. So you know exactly where it is, and you also see that there, uh, you, you sense um, about um, an hour and a half normal travel away from the ship uh, on the opposite side um, is uh, several other ships that are that are coming, that are incoming um, from like the opposite direction of you guys. And they seem to be heading in the direction of the, of the abandoned vessel. And what can I tell about these ships? Um, I think uh, you you cross-reference a few of, like, the mechanical things about the ship that you can pick up, like, from your scanners, and it mm -hmm. seems to you, like, there's, you know, these, the ships wouldn't have any sort of, like, just um, mechanical thing about them um, that you could pick up, like, on long-range scanners that would just scream pirate. And, do and they like, have logos? Are they? Are they? Do they have a right? But you wouldn't I, be able to pick those. up. We would be able to detect things like <laughs> ion trails. Exactly. And, and your guess is like, till fuel type and yeah. that kind of thing. Your guess is that these are pirate ships, but till yeah. till says something incredibly untoward. Uh -huh. Very colorful, but incredibly yes. untoward. Mm -hmm. Very loudly in Greek. So, um, Fergus and, and Dylan, you're the only ones who can understand this. <laughs> and I think it's, it's like, it's also kind of a colloquial way of putting it. So like only somebody who's actually a native Greek speaker would really get it. Mm. Yeah. So I slap I think... him on the shoulder and I'm like, watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> there are three bleeping pirate ships. <laughs> Right. I, I on the scanners, an hour and a half out. Sure. Fergus, you said you covered your ears. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look, uh, I, I, I nod towards um, Fergus in, in an approving manner. <laughs> so, Ode, are you on the, on, the, on the bridge at this point? Yeah, so I think the music follows me as it gets louder. It's, like, <laughs> it's talking about smashing burning skulls and that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> really loud, obnoxious <laughs> screaming. And, uh, yeah, so I just kind of pan, deadpan, walk in and stand there with my music blaring. <laughs> Till whirl, til whirls the chair around. Turn that bleeping stuff off. He's, uh, he's very ticked. I... Uh, I can make a roll for this if you prefer, but I poke some buttons to try and plug the wireless proverbial aux cord in to make it play <laughs> instead. Nah, you don't need to roll to do that. You just do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, boop, boop. And then it stops for a second and then starts to play over the speakers in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Till reaches over and flips the master override for the audio system and shuts the entire thing off. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it just starts to come out of my compad again. <laughs> and then I just AI deadpan look up again. So the pirate vessels are approaching the crippled so vessel. Yes, they're they're approaching from like the opposite direction of where you are. Okay. So you're gonna come approximate speed. Can I? Yeah. Can so we get there before they get do? there in about an hour and a half with the current speed they're going. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you get if you if you go towards the the medicine medical vessel at like normal speed, then you will arrive about a half an hour after they do. Hmm. You could probably do some engineering things to, like, make yourself go faster, but... Mm hmm You know, hand wavy them engineering things. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. Uncap the plasma buffers and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um... Re-metastasize the fuel capacitors, you know. <laughs> 
Metastasize. <laughs> I think it's metastasize. I don't remember. I've never heard it said out loud. <laughs> but remet remetastasizing the fuel capacitors would be a good idea. I think he's going to try to do that. Um, <sighs> so is there any kind of readout that insinuates that it's going to take us half an hour to get there? So it's going to take you two hours to get there? Oh, right. yeah, I think, um, longer. I mean, like, right. that I think Till, Till explains that sure. as he finds that out. Yeah. All right, then. All right. Loudly and more. loudly and irritated because Ode's still yeah. got his music playing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Are you cool with me just making up technology or do we have to like... Of course, yeah. I mean, unless it's like, hey, it turns out I had this awesome gun right. like all yeah. along. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just pull out my ship blowing up Ur and uh, no, um, yeah, he, so he pops out this little... Uh, like uh, tube and uh, this little like gelatinous bubble. He just sort of like taps that into his hand and sticks it in his ear and then punches some buttons on his compad and the music shuts off and instead comes out of his gelatin earbuds. And um, awesome. uh, yeah, he just points to the, to the display and says, they're all going to be dead before we get there. Except you actually say it like, they're all going to be yeah, dead before we get dead there. Before we get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He yeah. tries to say it all cool like, yeah. but it comes out loud because exactly. of the music. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know I mean? He's kind of deadpan. He just says it matter of factly, but much too loud. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to hurt your eardrums. Turn that down. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I walk over and, and pull the, the headphones out of his ear. I mean, you'd have to basically like, scoop the gel out of my ear with your finger. Are you? I mean... They're like little gelatin <laughs> things that you put in. But it's a little oh, bit weird. Right. <laughs> I mean... I like mean, molten gummy well. bear? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I scoop them out of your ear and I put them in my pocket. Um, <laughs> I mean, you take one out and then I am like, what are you doing? And turn my head... <laughs> I, I, I mean, do you want to, you want to make a roll here? Because I'm definitely going to. I mean, yes, if you'd like to restrain my character and attempt to pry it forcefully from his ear, you can do that. But <sighs> Eve Evelyn reaches again, and you and you shy your head away. And yeah, like you grab the first one, and he's like, "What are you doing?" Like, what are you doing? And right. That like off. She just the sighs bridge. and puts it back in. <laughs> if you're going to fight, do it in the galley. <laughs> and turn that thing down. We need to go dark. Oh the yeah the combat's gonna, not making noise anymore. It's just in my ears now. So. I'm going to try to br I'm going to try to bring us in closer. See if we can't beat the pirates in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, is everybody everybody good with that? I head bang. Yeah. You head bang. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it looks like you're starting to nod, and then you just go. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, real quick, um, Caleb. I want to I want to a reminder of my skills. Of what they do exactly, administer. Uh, administration or administer, yeah, is. Um, That's like running a business, basically. Can, maybe can you just send me a list real quick? I mean, there's a list on your character sheet. No, he no, no. Have, I, like the I, description though. Yeah, I don't have any description oh, or okay. anything. That's not what I thought you meant by list. But... Uh, yeah. So it's on page eight of the PDF. I, I should have. You should all have a link to it. In in the Facebook thing. Yeah. Like okay, it should, right, if you I'll go to your it, okay, um, so yeah, everybody else is like cool with that till till it's just like okay, well, I don't know, we're gonna try to beat the pirates there. Yeah, <laughs> first you just give a thumbs up. Um, sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like a pilot test to me, I guess. Um, it's fair. Yeah. Go ahead and make that test. Um, it should be, it's, it's a little difficult. I think like difficulty, like nine, probably nine. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oof. Uh, all right. So you can do it, but you will probably like cause some damage to the ship. Like you'll, you'll, you'll probably just like, uh, um, ex what's the word? Uh, Engines. Yeah, exasperate the engines a bit, or like you're not. It's definitely not going to be good for the ship to 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 do this. Or they'll probably. Be or you or you just go at normal speed, fine. and and uh, your your engines are fine. Okay. Um. 
Yeah, I think Till realizes pretty quickly that even pushing the that the engines on this ship are not even not even as strong as what he's used to flying and is they're just not going to make it mm -hmm. or we're not going to make it in time guys i think he turns to evelyn what do you think can we help them i have an idea <laughs> and one though just might work till ignores ode <laughs> okay uh, is there more than one um console here yeah, I mean, you can just sit down on, like, a, okay. like a seat next yeah, to Yeah, I sit down on, like, the co-pilot seat or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, if I am able to do this, which I don't imagine is that difficult, I want to try and hail the pirate ship. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you could attempt to do that. Okay. Um, you don't have to roll, you can just do it, I guess, yeah. Because he's okay. already picked up the, the, yeah. the ships, so. Um, can I roll notice to figure this out? I mean, I'm right there. It's I don't, you don't, so he you're literally just has to, to click a button and he's done it, basically, right? Like, like I'm just typing an insult about their mother into the chat window, basically. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're just like sending a text to them, basically. Yeah, like a. Yeah, basically. Text based hail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you just send an insult to them. Um, yep. So you just like type something in. I, I don't know. Okay. Does that? Um, Till you said you're ignoring him. Yeah, I think Evelyn, I think you noticed that he, d like, he did that, but you're not exactly sure, like, you, you noticed that he sent, it, sent, he sent a text message somewhere from the ship. Till ignored him until he sat down, I guess. Right. Okay, right. so you noticed Till this ignored too. his prompt. Um, uh, Till notices very clearly <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly what the guy is doing mm -hmm. on the center console, straight in the middle of everything. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's not happy about it. Mm -hmm. I send another one as an addendum to make it more scalding. I'm like, oh, oh, oh! I thought of a better, better. <laughs> yeah. And also, it's fact. <laughs> Till swats at his hands and cusses at him. And he's like, "You realize if these are pirates, they are killers." Well, I, as far as I know, the plan was to fly to them, right? To see what we could killers? do. To see what we could do to help the craft once the pirates move on. Oh, so after At this all point, shot. Okay, I see. I understand. All right. I was I misunderstood the context. I, I apologize. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> <laughs> Till just simmers for a moment out of the cockpit or the out of the bridge he says that to me yes okay yeah he just stands up he's like come into the bridge come out of the bridge <laughs> <laughs> got any ideas oh, I have out oh, get out yeah he's, he's saying this as he's like walking out <laughs> Fergus or Dylan, do you have any like thing to say while, while this is happening? I feel like Dylan just kind of, kind of looks at um, Till and just kind of says, "At least he has better music taste than you." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm just looking back and forth between them. If the la if if the last barrage was shocking. It was tame in comparison to this one. <laughs> just swearing like a sailor. Tells the spacer, dude. Yeah, yeah, fair. Space trucker. Yeah, literally. A space yeah. trucker? Yeah. He was a convoy pilot before that. Basically, you're a combination of a sailor and a trucker. <laughs> yeah. I just need to also be a marine, and you'll have all of them. Well, he's a sailor, trucker, and an astronaut. I don't think astronauts are... You watch your mouth. <laughs> Do you say that, Evelyn? No. Yeah. I was saying that to you. <laughs> oh. Fergus is just enamored <laughs> with all of your behavior. <clears throat> He's so used to high society. He's just like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> These common folks. Till crazy. Till kind of just pulls into himself. 
Till, I need you to focus right now. There could be lives at stake. Connor, how old did you say your character is? I didn't. 16. Okay. Nice, I'm older. <laughs> you don't think I know this, Evelyn. Well, if you knew it, then you should be reacting appropriately. So clearly, I'm going to claim ignorance. <laughs> Or, or I say, um, if I were you, I would have claimed ignorance. Till spins the chair so he can stand up, and he's clearly head and shoulders taller than everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe not Ode, but everybody else in the, no, the room, bridge. Just... Right. You're definitely much taller than Fergus. Also, the, <laughs> the microfocal laser randomly goes off. Really? In a random direction, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just see one of the asteroids just like get sliced in half. <laughs> it just starts spinning. Till, so, please disable the weapons. <laughs> and and like uh, Evelyn is just kind of watching as, the stars as, if as he Evelyn it. literally as Evelyn says that Till's already got his hand on the master switch and mm -hmm. flicks that <laughs> off too. I gotta look up our ship and see if there's anything else I can mess with. That. <laughs> Till stride Till takes two strides to the security console, pops in a few overrides, and Ode's yeah. completely locked out of the entire computer system. <laughs> yeah. Including the Wi Fi. You have a genetic <gasps> Oh, genetic including the Wi Fi oh. you said. Is that a genetic like indicator? How do you how do you lock a person out of a thing? You have your own login, dude. Everybody yeah, does. I have to log into the gun. That sounds inefficient. Okay, so it's an access fob. A <laughs> yeah. little key fob, right, that you just plug in or you tap against a pad and it knows who you are signing uh, in, right? I mean, at the very least, right, all, all still has to do is just, like, shut it off. Like, and just say right, no yeah. one gets to use well, it. Well, I figured that, right. Yeah. Also, no, I think it has individualized access to you. Yeah, I, I think probably. Yeah, I think that's probably. Till has a slightly above average wisdom score. It has individualized access. Well, your right, slightly above a... average wisdom score does not indicate a slightly above average pocketbook, and that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's sci-fi. That could be a thing. I just didn't know if it was no, a yeah, thing. Yeah, I think, I think so. I like That's that. a thing IRL, I my dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, is it a cheap thing IRL? Pretty much. I mean, fairly. Biometric indicators? Are I mean, if, yeah, if the ship biometric, is already... It's not biometrics. Yeah, if, no, if the ship is already, like, just a giant computer, right? Like, all you have to do is is just say everybody to access anything has to, like, I don't know, put their finger on the scanner or just, like, have a fob or whatever, right? And then mm -hmm. anything they want to access, you have to do that thing, and then you just cut off access to... At least, logins. in terms of critical systems, it wouldn't make sense mm -hmm. for... Especially like a free merchant, which could carry passengers. You you always want some kind of override on, or right. some kind of, you want some kind of authentication on your master systems. Okay, cool. So um, so you guys are you know going through space um at a, a normal pace through through the the belt, and uh, about an hour and a half in, uh to to the flight, um you get a second transmission, um. From this so direction. the pirates never responded to the childish insults? Uh, no, I don't think they did. <laughs> oh man, no. That almost makes it worse. Okay, so Caleb, if at all possible, you should send me the list of skills somewhere, because I cannot find them for the life of me. But, uh, whatever is fine. Uh, yeah, I can do that. So yeah, about um, you know, half the way, half the half the way, um, half an hour to the ship is what I meant. Um, yeah, you get you get a second transmission um from from the uh, the medical ship, which is um called um uh, the STS Karnak. Um, and you know the STS is like the the standard um standardized uh um like acronym for uh for uh various corps on midas they kind of had a, a standardization thing they all agreed on for for like the 
the call sign things. Um, so it's kind of an indication of port of call? Yes. Yep. That's fair. Um, and you know it's like, it's some phrase in Greek. Like, that's the acronym for STS. Um, but yeah, so the, the Karnik um, sends you another transmission. Um, are you going to pick it up? For sure. Yeah. Um, so you... You, you turn it on and right away you, you notice that this is not um, a an iteration this is a live feed um, and you basically hear um, some heavy breathing at first <sighs> hello is anyone there it's a woman's voice is this the Karnak is everything all right yes this is the SDS Karnak um uh, who am I speaking to? This is Captain Adorant of the Void's Grace. Uh, huh. Thank you, Void's Grace. I, I thank thank all the stars. Uh, I there's we're having a problem here. Um, uh, I work for Castro Pharmaceutical Service. Did you did you pick up our initial transmission? Yeah, you seem to be in distress. You mentioned pirates. Yes. Um. Yes. Um, there were definitely pirates before, um, and, uh, we, we managed to fight them off, but it looks like there are other pirates. They went in, I think it's the same group, but with more, um, there are five ships, um, it's only a matter of time before they break the, uh, break the hull and, and they start breaching and, 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 and coming in. I, I'm sorry, I, how, how, how close are you? We're on our way as fast as we can manage. How long can you hold out? I turn off the comms. Till, has it ever occurred to you that this might be a trap? I'm thinking in terms of possibilities. So you just, you just muted your end, basically? Yeah. Yeah, and so she, she says, um, uh, sorry, what, what was the question that you asked? How long can they hold out? Right, and so while you're you're like having this conversation, the muted voice on her end, you know, she's saying like, uh, well, I'm, you know, we're trying as hard as we can. We'll, we'll hold off as long as we can. I, I'm not sure how how long, but we don't have many people left. So on and so forth. So there is about a 27% chance this is a trap. I think we should turn around. Hello? Hello? Are you still there? Till. I think... Can she see... Only we Do, we still have the vid, vid feed up? Just, just the audio turned off? Um, so it's just audio. It's not a. It's not oh, a it's just an audio yeah. transmission. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Connor, you technically have precognition. Only there's a precog. Can I roll so... for that? Wow. Well, yeah, you have a. You have the ability, right? You have. Um, here, let me. Let me. There's a precognition, psychic Attribute skill, and technique. Go... Intelligence. Yeah, I know. I well, yes. wait. So it's. Connor has uh, it. Let me. Let me find it. Uh, yeah, I, like, um, David, if if you can send me like a link to, I sent you the link like, to the, the to the to the book, Connor, on Zoom. It's in video chat. Oh, okay. I see. Um. Also, do we all know that? Uh, I mean, I assume we all know this because of the way you've been playing it. But do we all know that Evelyn is psychic? Yeah. Have you been hiding it, Connor? No, but I haven't told anybody. Right. So you all it's kind of figure. <laughs> That she has some sort of psychic abilities, but I mean, when you walk in, is it to put up the call a second before right. it happened? I feel yeah. like, I feel like right. I mean, it's it's of... probably pretty obvious, but I've probably never given. I mean, if you would ask me directly, I would have said yes, but okay. it's n not something I talk about. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um. So the way Oracle works, Connor, which is like the core technique that you have, um, uh, you have the you have to commit effort for the day, um. And that means uh, you you don't have that. This is the only time you can use your psychic abilities, um, because you wait. How much effort do you have? You have total. You have three effort. Um, I think it's just one effort, right, David? That gets committed each time. I think it depends on the power, but it's probably just one. Let me see if I can find that real quick again. Yeah. Um. Yeah, okay, yes. I think that's probably how it works. Yeah, so um, you can commit one effort for the day, and so you can't, you won't get that effort back, which effort is, like, the main, like, you know, 
it's currency for psychic abilities. Um, but then uh, you'll get to ask me, let's see, you get a single brief vision related to the question about the future that you're asking. Okay. Um, this vision so, is always from their own personal vantage point and never reveals more than uh, a minute of insight, though the psychic processes it almost instantly as part of the power's use. Um, um, so you can see up to one day into the future. So what's your exact question? Should I roll first or? Nope, you don't have to roll. It's just a thing. Oh, yep. awesome. You okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, and so I take down one effort then? No, so uh, I just I just did it for you. It's commit committed effort for a day. It's right there. Okay. And I just oh, put yeah, do it for up. the whole day because the this part here just says effort is committed to fuel psionic power. Some commitment is relatively short term, as only as long as the power is in effect. Other powers require the effort to be committed for the full scene, while the most powerful might be required for the rest of the day. So that's impressive that he already has a power that requires a whole day of. Yeah. Um. Well, and I so think I think you. it should just be one because he has three effort. There's to be no point in having multiple effort if like. You couldn't no, yeah, use um, it different. Yeah. So. Well, is what what power is he using? Just or, the Oracle. Pretty yeah, or technique. Okay. Um. Wait, what level of skill does he have? Level one. So yeah, he can yep. see one. Okay. Yep. Um. Uh. Yeah. So, what's your question, Connor? Um. <laughs> I mean, probably just, is this person telling the truth? Right. Is this person actually in danger? Yes. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I guess, but specifically, is she telling the truth? Is she telling the truth about her situation? Yes. Yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to help you be specific about it. Cause if you just, <laughs> you know, is she telling the truth about what, you know, whatever. whatever. Okay. Um, Does she hold any ill will towards us? How about that? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I think um, you get a vision, um, you know, you you, um, you experience this as if in an instant, but uh, you basically get a vision of um, yourself um, in a in like a, a vac suit um, going on to uh, the, the, the Karnak, um, and uh, you're like fighting off pirates. Um, so you're like dodging and weaving and like shooting these pirates, and then you, you find this woman that you're talking to, and you, and like, they don't have a face because, or, or you, you see that you see them, like, actually for the first time, because you don't know what they look like, but you assume this is the same woman. Um, right. Because you're actually legit seeing it in the future. Um, and, uh, yeah, you see her, you see yourself, um, like, cradling her as she, like, cries into your arm, basically. Um, and so, yeah, the answer is, right, like, yes, she is in danger and she's telling the okay. truth. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm, make it a zero percent chance. Till. Full speed ahead. So, what does it look like on the outside, Connor? Um, when Evelyn has these visions. I I want to say that she does like the the like Harry Potter like like head turn kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you you all see this. So Are probably just a right? brief like head turn and then till full speed ahead. That was an abrupt change. Are you all right? 27% chance has gone down to 0% chance. Full speed ahead. How do you know? I know. I look you dead in the eye. I know. Is there visually something that I can tell based on the eyes well, I when someone's you. psychic? No. Yeah, they don't have like, a strange no, eye color or something. Yeah. There's like no outward indication? Mm -mm. I feel like if somebody looked like they had an, a seizure and then were like, I know a thing for certain, I feel like that's pretty Well, well I, how long, like, you said it happens in a, in a, in a, in a moment's notice, so yeah. I was thinking it's just literally, like, a couple seconds of... Yeah, you weren't, like, spasming you know. or whatever, yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, because she, she experiences it in, like, a singular moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah, she'd be, like, stuck there getting this vision, and maybe if she's in combat also, when right. this is happening, then Just as like, an lore thing, you have to take pills for this every day, so... Yes, so technically, yeah, you awesome. have you both have MES, um, Evelyn and Fergus, yeah. and so you technically, yes, you have pills for this. Um, so I, I imagine everyone would know about it. Yeah, unless... I don't you, think like, it makes it, sense, otherwise. Like, like, I right. have to do a thing every time... Right, no, I, I assumed people... Yeah, no, I, obviously everybody knows it. 
Yeah. Okay. But okay. I just haven't told anybody that that was something you guys just. Right. You know she up. has MES, but she, it's yeah. not necessarily maybe ever been said what her abilities are. I mean, my character would have specifically asked you, but we can do that later. Sure. Right. I mean, no, you got you guys have probably specifically asked me, and I've answered you, but. Oh okay. That I was just trying to explain the way. Right. And mostly no, that's right. Yeah, I just. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Because Josh was sounding like he wasn't sure if his character knew. Gotcha. Whether or not he was sick, so. That was okay. No, that's fine. That that was I was playing the direction that I thought we were going, but we're good. Yep. All okay. right. That's why I wanted to clarify. Still spins around, throws the throttle as far up as it'll go. Yeah. So are you gonna try to get there quicker now, or just like keep staying as you were going without damaging the ship? I mean, we're not gonna put down. We're not gonna damage the ship. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, I yes. guess opening the throttle is more for the, for the yeah yeah just... for the yeah exactly yeah the impact of yeah, it yeah, not yeah, necessarily that we're yeah. actually gonna break anything yeah and so um, I think we probably just cut to our first break on that scene you you just like okay. when you guys are continuing through the belt um, all right let's let's go ahead and take a quick break here and then we'll be right back and we'll see what happens when you meet some pirates maybe I don't know oh right. yeah we'll be right back with more Lisa and Red right after this. <laughs> 